So in this video, we're going to talk about how to graph lines by just using the intercepts. And that probably leads to the most obvious question, which is, what are intercepts? Um, okay, so with intercepts, so you could just take any any line you want. So I just I just drew something at random here. And so remember, on a graph, we've got the y-axis. And so notice that at the y-axis, this is where this graph has crossed. So where the graph crosses the y-axis, that's what's known as the y-intercept. And then notice here at our x-axis, so here's where the graph is crossing the x-axis. So those are appropriate, appropriately called the x-intercepts. So we're not very creative with how we, we name things in math, I guess. So the thing I do want to just note here, though, with the, with the y-intercept. So, okay. So here, so if I look at where this y-intercept actually is, I don't know where it's crossing the y-axis, but the thing I can definitely say is that the x-coordinate is absolutely zero. So if you have a point that's on the y-axis, the x-coordinate has to be zero. And then look at the, the x-intercepts. So I can see that there are multiple x-intercepts, but there's one thing for sure about the coordinate for, for all of these, and that is that, um, the the y part of the coordinate so the the first part is a so that's just a placeholder for this is whatever number it hits on the x-axis but for sure if it's crossing the x-axis the y coordinate's always going to be zero so why is that helpful to know well by noting this information that actually helps us determine how to find intercepts so let's talk about how do you find x-intercepts well, based off of what we were just looking at, basically what you're going to do is you're going to set y equal to 0 because we know that the y coordinate has to be 0 to cross the x-axis. So you'll set y equal to 0 and then you'll you'll solve for x. So again, just as a visual, so in our case, we're going to be using lines. So to find that point, once again, it's the y coordinate just must be 0. So sometimes if you if you forget how this actually works, you can draw this little illustration and just remind yourself what has to be true. Okay, so now what if I pivot to the y-intercepts? Well, very similar direction. So in this case, set x equal to 0 and solve for y. And again, if you look at the graph and just think about how this all kind of lines up, if you look at the y-intercept right there, it makes sense. The x-coordinate has to be 0 if we're on the y-axis. So this is just a little hack you can use if you ever forget how to do this. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to just go through finding the x and y intercepts as well as a third point, and then I want to graph. So the reason we want to find a third point is it's just a little bit of like a check to make sure that we've, we've graphed properly. So here's what we're going to do. So I've got this first example. So 3x minus 2y equals 6. So we're going to go through and we're going to find our intercepts. So for the x-intercept, so just as a quick reminder, so for the x-intercepts, we want to set the y equal to 0, and we want to solve for x. So let's do that. So let's set the y equal to 0. Oops, let me grab my other pen. Okay, so y equal to 0. Okay, and so look at what happens now. This actually makes this problem very simple because the whole thing just drops out, to, and we get 3x equals 6. And then I can go through and solve to get x equals 2. Okay, so the, the point here, the y-intercept, would be the point 2 comma 0. Okay, so now let's pivot to what about the y-intercept. So now we just basically flip-flop, right? So we're going to plug in 0 for x, and then we solve for y. So then we're just left with negative 2y equals 6. We can divide both sides by negative 2, and we get y equals negative 3. So the point in this case then, I set x equal to 0, and then my y coordinate is negative 3. So sometimes when people do this, they try to take this x coordinate and this y coordinate and mash them together for a point, and that's not what the intercept is. It's two separate points. Each of those points has 0 in part of the point. So it's two separate points. That's a thing to remember. Okay, so I want to graph this, and I still have to find a third point. So remember, we had uh, 2, 0, and we had 0, negative 3. So now I just have to find another point here. So at this point, I can kind of just choose anything that I want, really. So why don't we do x equals 3? I'm just throwing something out here. So if I take 3 times 3 minus 2y equals 6, so I get 9 minus 2y equals 6. Subtract off the 9 to get negative 
2y equals negative 3, and then divide both sides by negative 2, and we get y equals 3 halves, which is the same thing as 1.5. So remember, the exercise said that we had to find a third, we had to find a, a third point. If you watched my video on graphing with tables, um, then this should make more sense. It's basically in line with that technique. So we found the point 3 and then 1.5. So I'll show you why we get this third point in a second. So now that I have my points, we can go ahead and graph. So let's start with 2, 0. So here I am. So I got to 1, 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark that one. And then I've got the next one. So I've got 0, negative 3. So I come down 1, 2, 3. So here's 0, negative 3. And then finally, I've got this last point, 3, 1.5. So I come over 1, 2, 3, and then I go up 1, 0.5. So the reason that we find the third point is because it helps kind of serve as a check that we got the right line. So I can see that these all definitely line up together and I can connect them pretty easily. So the thing that you don't want to have happen is like, so let's say that I have, so just as a hypothetical, let's say I have this point and then I get this point and then I get this point. So just by looking at this, you're not gonna you're not gonna make a line out of this, right? Like you cannot connect these with a straight line. So if you had a situation like this, that tells you that you you did something wrong. So you want to have that third point just as a check there. Okay. So why don't we pivot now to this next example? So once again, we're gonna find the x and y intercept. If you want to pause here and try to find these on your own, just to check if you've got it, that'd be great. Okay, so for finding the x-intercept, so just remember, so what we want to do with the x-intercept is set the y equal to 0. So let's start by putting in 0 for y. And this actually makes this nice and simple. It's just x equals 4. There's nothing else we have to solve for. So the x-intercept will be the point 4, 0. And then the y-intercept, so now I have to plug in 0 for x. So 0 minus 4y equals 4. So I get negative 4y equals 4. And then divide both sides by negative 4 to get y equals negative 1. So there's my point. Okay, so once again, now we're in a situation where I can kind of note these two points, but I want to find that third point. So let's go back to our scratch area. And so now we can just graph a, or come up with like a, a third point here. So what if I did like x equals negative 4? So I'm just kind of choosing something at random here. So if I plug in x equals negative 4, so I'm just hoping that this is going to give me something I can easily solve for. So I'm going to solve for y now. So I add the 4s to each side. So I get negative 4y equals 8, and then divide both sides by negative 4 to get y equals negative 2. So this gives me a third point, and you can literally choose whatever numbers you want for that third point. There's no like, uh, there's no magical way that I'm coming up with this. It's just, again, it's, it serves as that check for you. So the, the big thing is now when we, when we plot the three points, just do they line up in a line? And if you, if you did it right, they will always line up in a line, even if you don't choose the same points I choose. So now let's graph. So I've got this 4, 0. So I'm going to come here at the origin and go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, there's the first point. Now 0, negative 1. So here's 0, here's negative 1. So there's my next point. And then I've got this last point. So negative 4, 2. So I'm going to come 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and then down 2. So. Okay, and so once again, I can see these definitely line up. Um, so I know I've got the the right idea here. So those all go together like that. So we're good to go. Okay, so I have just one more example in this case, and it's a slightly different way of looking at the equation, but if you're looking for another example, here you go. So remember for the x-intercept, so what we want to do is we want to set the y equal to zero. So I plug in, oops, let me get the right pen color. So my zero for y, and then I get one half x minus two. Now in this particular case, because of how the equation is being written, is just we've got a little bit more work to do in this case. So I have to solve for x, so I'm going to go ahead and add 2 to each side, and then I've got 1 half x equals 2. So I've talked about in other videos to clear the fraction in this case, what you're going to want to do is you basically just multiply by the denominator on each side. And in doing that, you cancel out the 2's. So 
we get x equals 4. So this will be the x-intercept 4, 0. Okay. And now for the, the y-intercept, so now for the y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for x like this, except this makes this like very simple. Like everything just drops out and it's just y equals negative 2. So that, that's nice. So this will be 0, negative 2 for our y-intercept. So once again, so I can just kind of plug these in. So I have 4, 0, 0, negative 2. And now I need to find that third point. So we'll go back to our scratch area. And I actually talked about in my video on creating tables, like when you have an equation like this. So choose an x. Like, if you, like the way that this particular equation is set up, basically we can choose whatever x we want and we're just going to get the y as the output, right? Because the y is on this side. So basically we just do the calculation. Like this is a nice equation to work with because you've got this nice input output versus the other equations we were working with. We had to do a little more work sometimes to, to solve. So if I'm going to choose something to plug in for x, I want to make sure that this one half, this fraction drops out. So this has got a two in the denominator. So I just want to plug in something even at least for x. So if I want to plug in something even, let's just plug in 2. So 1 half um, times 2 is just equal to 1. So I've got 1 minus 2. So this will be y equals negative 1. So this will be the point 2, negative 1. And there's my third point. So now I can graph these. So I've got 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x-axis. 0, negative 2. And then 2, negative 1. And so once again, those line up quite nicely, so I can connect them together. Bada bing, bada boom, we're all good. So that's how you graph with intercepts. Um, so hopefully that was helpful to you, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.